When modeling for subdivs, we may find ourselves struggling with unwanted bumps and smoothing artifacts. This video will cover the subject of topology and the causes of smoothing artifacts. <music> 3D artists frequently state that it's important to keep meshes exclusively made up of four-sided faces, and not without reason. Here we see that the addition of a three-sided face produces a small lump, as does the addition of a five-sided face. The effect is compounded if many non-chords are present. It's worth noting that the effect of these artifacts is reduced as the angle between the faces is reduced. An entirely flat mesh may have horrible topology and yet not display any smoothing artifacts. Thus, one solution to smoothing artifacts is to use very dense meshes. The dense mesh will reduce both the area and intensity of a smoothing artifact. This is not a practical solution in most cases, as extremely dense meshes are more difficult to work with in animation, texturing, rendering and so on. It's also worth noting that non-chords are not the only cause of smoothing artifacts. Indeed, if we subdivide any mesh once, it will become all quads, and yet further subdivisions will still obviously show smoothing artifacts. What are the other causes of smoothing artifacts? The most obvious cause is simply placing verts so that they protrude or indent into the mesh inappropriately. Unevenly spaced edges can also produce artifacts. Here we see that the inconsistent edge lengths in this mesh produce significant artifacts when subdivided. This may be corrected with the addition of an inline edge as shown here. Inline edges are an effective way of creating neat, controllable corners. The inline edges may be shifted to vary the width of the beveled corner from very sharp to very rounded. Another cause of smoothing artifacts is poles. A pole is a vertex with many edges connected to it. To some degree, poles are unavoidable, but bear in mind that the effect of this artifact becomes more severe the more edges make up the pole. Thus, it is advisable to minimize the number of poles, and where possible, to restrict poles to flat or inconspicuous areas. How do we remove non-quads? Non-quads with an even number of sides, such as 6, 8 or 10 sided faces, may easily be reduced to a group of quads. However, non-quads with an uneven number of sides, such as 3, 5 and 7 sided faces, are more difficult to eliminate. We can perform all manner of edits, only to move the uneven sided face around. It's simply mathematically impossible to remove an uneven sided face in isolation without producing a new uneven sided face in the process. Instead, we can make two uneven sided faces cancel each other out by adding or removing an edge to connect them, or alternately by other edits such as turning edges. If an open edge is present, it may be used in much the same way by adding or removing an extra loop in the open edge. We can cancel out the uneven sided face. Modelers can have difficulty consolidating between detailed and simple parts of a mesh. For instance, the complexity of fingers to the simplicity of palm and wrist. Modelers may find themselves using far too many edges on the simple parts, such as the wrist, and run into problems as a result. A better solution is to make the edges flow back in the direction they came from. It 
It may be argued that modelers should ignore technical matters such as topology and smoothing artifacts and focus on artistry, but topology is still an important consideration, particularly if we are working as part of a team, as poor topology can cause problems for animation, rigging, unwrapping and so on.